In this video, we're going to see how to create a simple web page with Saltcorn and how to adjust the theme to get the look and feel that we want. Building a web page is a simple task that will show us some of the functionality in Saltcorn, in particular, the drag and drop builder and the plugin store. So it is a good starting point for a tutorial that doesn't require any theory. In later videos, we will see how to use the database tables and views to create dynamic content. The first thing you need to build pages in Saltcorn is an installation. You can get this by installing it on a desktop or a server, or you can use the free hosting facility on saltcorn.com. Because the free hosting on saltcorn.com is the easiest, it is what we will do today. But just remember, this is only for evaluation and should not be used for any data that needs to be secure. Open a browser and go to saltcorn.com and press the Try It Now button. You will be asked for an application name, which will be the first part of the URL your application will be hosted on, followed by saltcorn.com. You should use your name or the name of your project with no spaces. If a name you try is taken, then just try a different name. Here, I will be building Saltcorn Course App 1. So just click Create, and you will be shown your new link. When you press this, you're transferred into your new application that has been created for you. And you should create the first user who will build and control the site. So you should enter your email address and a password here. I'm using a suggested password. And then click Create User. The first thing you'll see when you're logged in is the welcome screen, which shows you some of the ways you can get started using Saltcorn. In this tutorial, we're going to create a page and you should create the Create Page button here or you can also go to the list of pages to the menu here on the left and then click Add Page. Usually in Saltcorn, when you want to create something, you go through several steps. On the first step of adding a page, you should enter a page name, which is part of the URL and by which the page will be known within the application. You can also enter the title and the description of the page. You can also select who has access to the page. Authorization in Saltcorn is done by a simple role-based system. Every user belongs to a role and, and the roles have a strict hierarchy such that the roles with greater permissions can access more resources. Here you set the minimal role that a user must have to view this page. By setting it to public, it will be viewable by users who are not logged in. Click Next to go to the next step where you will create the contents of the page using the drag and drop builder. This is the same builder that will be used to create forms and views of data and learning it is key to Saltcorn. There are four areas in the builder. The largest in the middle shows the contents of the page that we are building up. On the left, there is a set of widgets that can be dragged into the page contents. Let's see this quickly. To drag a text element into the main area, I click and hold the text widget and dra drag it into the main page contents and drop it in place. I can change the text by clicking on it and then typing in the box here. Let's also put this in a column. I pick the columns widget and drop it into the page area. I can then pick up the text element and drop it into one of the columns. Below the widgets that I can drag in is a layer representation of the contents of the page. You can use this to see how the different elements fit within each other. You can close and open the container widgets, and you can also drag and drop these elements into other containers. On the right is the settings panel for the currently selected widget. Let's select the text element. You can see that I can change the 
content here, as well as some settings for the text element. I can also select the columns and change their settings. This can be a bit hard, but the best place to click is between the columns or you can select it in the layers. Then in the column settings, we can change the number of columns or the width of each column. In the other column over here, we would like an image. Since I don't have any images uploaded to the system, I drag in the image component and in the image settings, you can say where you want the file to come from, the image file. And uh, that can be a file that has uploaded to the system, uh, a public URL with the image, or a uh, new file that we are going to upload. So since that's what we would like to do, I choose the upload option. And then um, as soon as I pick the file here, that gets uploaded and it is now changed into a, a file that is in the system. So please also enter an alternative text. This is for people who uh, use screen readers. So you should type in a description um, of, of what's in the image. You can then save the page by clicking done. You can also see the page by clicking on it. We've now built the page that we want, but it doesn't look quite right because the theme currently used isn't really suited for this kind of content. The last thing I will show you in this video is how to change to a different theme. Both themes and other types of functionality are installed from the plugin store, which you can access by clicking on the settings and then plugins. There are a lot of extensions here and most of them are not themes, but different types of content you can use. Click on the Themes tab to show only the theme extensions. The one I would recommend working with for this type of content is the Any Bootstrap theme, which has a lot of uh, flexibility. So just click Install to enable it. And then you're shown the configuration for this plugin. You can see we've already changed the theme now. The menu is at the top instead of the left. The most important setting is at the top where you can choose lots of different themes. Let's just pick one of them. Click Save to enable the settings and you can immediately see that the new theme is enabled. If you want to go back and try another theme within the Any Bootstrap Theme plugin, first find the installed theme by either clicking Themes or Installed and then click this little cog button to which, which takes you back to the theme configuration and then you can choose another theme and then press press save. Finally, let's go to the pages tab and tell Saltcorn that the page we have built should be the one that is served as the home location for different types of users. The one you most maybe most interested in is the uh, home location for public, which is people who have not logged in with an account. So I set that to my page, which is the page we built before and click save. Now log out and then go back to the home location. And there you go. That is the page we have built. To sum up, in this video we have seen how to create a new application, how to create a page with some content, how to upload images and to use them in pages, and how to change the look and feel by installing a theme and customizing it. In the next video, we will just round up a few more settings, taking you through the Saltcorn menu options before we go into managing data, which is the videos after that.